In this next video, we're going to go ahead and look at how we can create a unique page template within our WordPress child theme. So currently on my yoga retreats page, I want to alter the page and I want to add some text up here that says retreats for 2017, like kind of as a banner or something like that. This is a change where I'm going to need to create some text and I'm not going to be able to simply just use CSS to be able to insert the content that I want. We're going to be creating a new PHP page to use as a template for these changes. Here's the back end of my website. I'm going to go to the pages section and I'm going to click on the yoga retreats page, which is the page that I want to augment. Currently right now, I don't have an option over here on the right to choose any other page templates. Some themes may give you an option to choose additional page templates. It just depends on how the theme is built. This particular theme, the 2017 theme, does not have that, but we will go ahead and create that ourselves so that we can have a new template to use on our page. We're not going to be making any humongous changes, but we're just going to do something simple so that I can show you how this works. Here is my 2017 child theme, and we've already been working on our template parts section. We made some changes to the footer so that we could have our own custom footer text appear on every page. What we want to do now is we're going to want to create a page that will live in the root folder of my theme page. If we look in the parent theme, there is a file called page.php right here. This is the template that will control all of the content on the page. I'm going to make a copy of this and put it into my child theme. And we'll open this in our editor. And you can see what this page looks like. There is a comment up here, and this comment is important. It tells you that this is the template for displaying all pages. It also has some PHP calls and there is some HTML mixed in here. So just really quickly, what's happening is it's pulling in the header that's coming from our header.php file. Then there's a div with a class of wrapper. There's some additional divs here. There's a main HTML element. And then there's another PHP call that's bringing in some additional content from our site. And then finally we have a call that's bringing in the footer. We don't want to change all of the elements on this page. We only want to change some of these elements. And we're going to go ahead and actually leave this page because most of our pages throughout our website are still going to use this default page template. But I'm going to make a special banner page template that I can use on any page where I might want to have this new feature that we're going to add into our website. So it's important to just know that this is here. We're actually not going to be changing our page.php file, but I'm going to use this as a starting point for the page that I'll be creating. With the page.php file open, I'm going to do a save as. I'm going to save in my same root directory and I'll just call this, let's call it page banner. I generally give any new pages the name of page just so that I can stay clear as to what their purpose is. I'll save this and then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to update this comment. The comment is where you can specify the template name. So this is going to be important. I'm going to actually get rid of everything within the CSS based comments or PHP based comments here. And I'm going to type template name colon. And it's important that the T and the N are capitalized when you do this. And then I'm going to give this a name. And this is the name that I want to display in the admin section of WordPress. So when we get back into the admin section of WordPress, I will have a new page called banner page. Now, before we make modifications to that page, let's just look at our website he here. We're going to create a banner that's going to appear right underneath the navigation and right above the additional page content. So again, you probably are going to have to fish around so you can find what's controlling what elements and where things are organized. If I look around, there's a div with an ID of content 
that's nested inside another div with a class of site content and it looks like that's inside of a div with an ID of page. I want to create this new content underneath my navigation. So it looks like the navigation is part of the header. So probably somewhere around this site content contain class or the class of site content, something in there. So if we go back into our editor and we look at our file right here, I'm going to kind of look around for some of these things. And you can see that here's a div with a class of wrap. Here's a div with a ID of primary. And here is a main with an ID of main. So those are the things that I could kind of look for. The other option you have is simply to just create some stuff on the page. Sometimes if I'm not totally sure, I might just put like test content. And if I save this page and we go back into our browser, first of all, nothing is going to refresh yet because I haven't told WordPress that I want to use my new page template. But if we go into the admin portion of WordPress and if I refresh my page here, you can now see that I have a new section called template that appears within the page attribute section. By default, all of your pages are going to be using the default template. But at this point, because I have template, I can use the pull down menu. And now, lo and behold, I have a new option for banner page. This is the page that we just made. So if I create banner page and update, we'll see if now we go into the front end part of the website and refresh, you can see this content that I've placed on my page. So this is the new content that I just made called test content. And I can now see where this exists. So the content called test content is going to exist right inside of the main. So that can be helpful in just finding where stuff is. So if I want my content that I'm creating to be above this, then I might want to try putting it somewhere else. So if I put my test content text, I'll just put some exclamations here too, so we can find it real easily and save and then refresh my page, you can see that here's the new content. So it hasn't actually moved position wise, and that's probably because of the CSS. Okay. So if I hover over a wrapper, you can see how there's the spacing between the navigation and where my page content actually has. If I go up to the div with an ID of content, which is the next item in the hierarchy, I can see that that green space, which indicates some padding is being used right now. That's kind of where I want to put this content. So again, I could go in here and I could say, well, what happens if I take the test content and I move it into the wrap section, but outside of primary and we save and refresh. You can see once again, the page content isn't moving, but the location of where this is in my HTML is kind of moving around. So these are going to become important. The other thing that I want to point out to you is if we look up here in the body tag, I have some new classes that have been added. And one of them is page dash template dash page banner. I also have page dash template dash page banner dash PHP. These two classes are a result of my new template file. So this is another way that I could tie in with my CSS and hook these pages and make styles that are particular to this page. So again, that's going to become something important for us to be aware of. And we'll use that once we start to add some CSS and style this page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create some content that is going to go above the wrapper. So in between the header and the wrapper, and I'm going to create a new div here. This is going to have a class of, and I'll just call it full banner. And I am just going to go ahead and type the text that says retreats 2017 and we'll save. And if we go back into the browser and refresh, you can see that now my text is showing up the retreats 2017. It is above this additional content. So if we fish around, we can see here's our div. That's my hook. And now what I can do is I can make some CSS to style this in the way that I want it to. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and we will go into our CSS. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my full banner as a hook and add some CSS so that I can style this in the way that I want. And I'm just going to make this a global change. So I'll make a rule for dot full banner. And I'm going to just add some styles. We'll change the background color here to black. We'll change the text color to white. We'll use a text align of center. We'll increase the font size. We'll add some padding. And I'm going to add a little bit of margin on the bottom just to push this content away from the rest of the content that is on my page. Okay, if we save now and go back into our browser and refresh our page, you can now see that my new CSS has been applied. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to want to remove this white section because I want this to be right underneath my navigation. So if we fish around, the div with an ID of content has some serious padding on it, five and a half M's it looks like, which is part of what's bringing that up. And if I delete that, you can see that it inherits a two and a half M's, but essentially I want it to look like this. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to overwrite the site content rule. I do, however, only want to affect the site content rule on pages that are using my banner template. So remember, on the body tag, I have a bunch of classes here and two of them that I could potentially use to be able to do this are gonna be page template dash page banner or page template page banner PHP. I'm just gonna use page template page dash pen, template dash page banner and we'll, and then I'm going to go ahead and use dot site content. So let's go ahead and try to add that in as well. I'm just gonna put this not in a media query, but just right here. So the selector is going to be dot page dash template dash page dash banner space. And then I'm going to use dot site dash content. And all we're going to do here is we're simply going to change the padding to zero. I save now and we refresh. The page should look like this and it should only be the retreats page. So if I go to one of my other pages, you can see that that page doesn't have the banner and that's because it's not using this template. Only this page is going to update with these changes. If I wanted to have one of my other pages use this template, I would have to go into the page itself, edit the page, and then change it from the default template to my banner page template. So this is my wellness program, which isn't gonna make much sense since it says retreats 2017. But if we go back to the front end part and go to our wellness program, you can see that now it has the banner too. I'm gonna remove that and set this back to the default template so it doesn't exist on the wellness page. I'll just have it appearing on my yoga retreats page. But in this way, you could modify and set up additional page templates where you can style the page to look completely differently. For instance, if I didn't want to, maybe I wanted it to say yoga retreats 2017 and then get rid of this right here. All I have to do to change the text, this is kind of static text. It's not gonna be dynamic. It's not gonna be generated by WordPress because it's coming from my page. So obviously if you hard code elements in here, they're gonna become something that becomes part of the page. So keep that in mind. But if I do that, this might be something that I can modify by augmenting one of my PHP files or it might be something that I can simply just eliminate by using CSS. I would definitely recommend probably using the CSS method first instead of creating additional PHP files just because I think it's gonna be a little bit easier. But you can see that this section here is header and it has a class of entry header. So I could probably just go ahead and tell on this page, this element to have a display of none. Let's just give that a quick try. So again, because I wanna be specific for only my banner page pages, I'm gonna make this part of the CSS 
and then this was called entry dash header and that is a class so let's make sure I put that on there and I'll just tell the display of this item to be none and if we save this and jump into our browser and refresh you should see that that's gonna go away and if I want this section over here to be full screen this probably has some sort of width right here that's telling it to be 58%. So if I change the width to be 100%, remember I can always test this out in the browser, then this page is gonna kind of take up the full width of the space that I have available. So again, I'm gonna make sure I'm using the correct selector. This is something called entry content as well, but it has a more specific selector. And if I double click in the CSS, it's going to select all of these things. If you look in the CSS, the only selector that is actually affecting this is the part that's black right here. So if I just get that part right there, that should give me what I want. I'll copy that because that's kind of long and I don't want to have to make any error messages there. So I'm going to come into my CSS, I'll paste that in, and I'm going to actually use my page-template-page-banner. So we already have a selector on the body right here. I probably don't need that, so I'm just going to replace that with my page-template-banner selector. And then we'll go ahead and we'll try adding a width of 100%. And let's see if this gives us the same solution. Nope, that part didn't work, so let's adjust this a little bit. I'll go ahead and just try making it page-template-page-banner space-dot-entry-content. Probably needs this other selector in there as well, because I think this is a little more specific, and actually, as I noticed, this is inside the media query. So what I might need to do is just drop this into the media query. Let's try that. We'll cut it and we'll put it into our media query that we have here. It's still not working, so I think it just needs to be more specific. So I'm gonna put the rest of that selector back on there. I'll try adding two classes to the body. Um, it looks like it's using this page two column not dot archive, and I'll just paste in my page template banner. Let's see if that does the trick. Yeah, okay, there we go. So now this area is taking up 100% of the available space. So if I had more content, it would kind of be full screen. All right, so in this way, I have showed you how you could modify some of the PHP files to be able to customize the templates that your WordPress site is using. Do keep in mind that all themes are slightly different. So this theme, especially 2017, it works a little bit differently than some of the other themes that are out there. Mostly it's going to be the fact that we use this template parts subfolder, which breaks out some of these different things. So you'll have to look around. A lot of themes aren't gonna be quite this complex but the premise of how we child theme is gonna be the same for any child theme that you're gonna be doing. You just might need to use other PHP files, other file names to accomplish what you want. And on a side note, I just wanted to remind you that for the purpose of this tutorial, I have just been focusing on the large screen design. Remember that this is a responsive theme, so I would definitely want to check my theme at the smaller size and make sure that the changes that I incorporated into my site, I had used the right CSS and I had made the correct changes. So just make sure that you're checking on both large and small screens and mid-size screens too, so that you can ensure that whatever edits that you make, you're not going to negatively affect the small and or large screen version of the website. Okay, good luck with child theming.